this is the start, I, I was going to say, of a new year. Guys, this is the start of a new decade. This is big. This is an opportunity. And, you know, for a lot of us, we're sitting there thinking, well, I didn't think we would even be here. You know, I thought Jesus would come way back before then, and we're just kind of in shock and all that he's here. We don't know the mind of God and the time of God, but I do know that God has us here for a reason. And I want to do the very best that we can. Uh, Take your Bibles to Matthew 16, verse 18, and of course, we're talking about our year. You've got a calendar in your lap. We're talking about where we're going, what we're doing, how we're going to get there, all that other stuff. So I know it's a different type of service, but I, I want to I preach through our, our year. I want to preach through what and the why and the how and the things that we're doing this. And uh, this applies to everybody here. If you're a guest with us today, I mean, I'm so glad that you're here. I, I hope I get to meet you after the service and connecting point. And uh, it's, a, it's an honor just to have our church family here. Uh, we're, we're casting vision for every person here of what we're doing and how we're going to do it. Uh, Do you guys realize in 2020 we will celebrate 55 years of Fellowship Baptist Church? 55 years. Praise God for 55 years of being here. And with that, you think about we've we've got the heritage of Pastor and Mrs. Denoff that have dedicated their life to planning this church and uh, have been serving in this church for all these years. We've got these facilities, we've got these grounds, we've got vans and we've got buses and we've got staff and we've got people. And I say all that to say this, the Bible says to whom much is given, much shall be required. God did not build a museum when he built Fellowship Baptist Church. I'm thankful for our past, but I'll tell you, Pastor Denoff, if he was here today, say, I did what I did and I laid the foundation so that you could build upon it, not rest upon it. It's not a matter of stopping. It's a matter of moving forward and giving God the glory. And I know it's a changing world, but let me, let me read this to you. And I, I, I've heard people say this, and we're going we're gonna to extinguish something right now that won't be part of the culture of our church. Okay, people say this, and I've heard people say this about churches that have closed and things, and I know some things are out of people's control and things like this, but I've had the excuse of just saying God is not working like he used to. It's not the same. Let me read this to you. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I cannot find an expiration date on that promise. He just said, I'm going to make you a promise. I'm going to establish the church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. There is nothing that Satan can throw our way that is going to tear us down or take us away from the mission. And that is not to say that we don't have challenges. I'm not saying things are not different. I'm not saying that we don't have uh, opposition. I'm not saying that people haven't fallen away. But I'm saying as for the working of God, we still have the same Bible and the same spirit and the same promise of God. We have all the same things when it comes to that. It really comes down to what we do with it comes down to the working of the Spirit of God. It, it's not a matter of bragging on how many buildings we have. God didn't die for buildings. It's not a matter of programs. It's not about programs. Programs just help us reach people. It's about people. That's what he talked about when he said the word church, which was like the first time mentioned in the Bible. He was talking about the people that he died for. And I look at this and I think, man, things have changed. But just like with Esther, when he said to her, or, I, I, I've put you in the, the kingdom for such a time as this. You're here for this. And I, I, th- I think about God is, how God is not taken back by the problems of our day. God has placed us here for the problems of today. Let that be our mindset. Sit there and say, man, look at how things have changed. And God says, yep, that's why you're there. Man, God, people are messed up, and God says, I know, that's why you're there. He has us here for such a time as this. I want to move forward with purpose, and I'm just going to kind of lay out like a strategy or an organization of how we think and how we process. See, here's our our, our 2020 purpose. We're going to have our 2020 purpose and our 2020 plan. Fellowship Baptist Church, here's our purpose statement as a church. Fellowship Baptist Church is a family that exists to make disciples that love God, love others, and serve both. Fellowship Baptist Church is a family that exists 
to make disciples that love God, love others, and serve both. And some of you are sitting there saying, wow, that's nothing new. It's, it's nothing new. We, we have this on our vans, on our bulletin, on our programs, on our hallways, everywhere you go. But I want to lay this out and explain something to you. Number one, we established that Fellowship Baptist Church is a family. We are a family. And you say, well, that's cute. You know, it's like, it's, it's neat that you guys kind of throw that in there and it makes us feel good. Oh, you're my family. Do you realize that when the Bible uses the terms that he describes the church, he didn't use it as a group or a congregation or religious organization. He calls us the children of God. The Bible, when he was talking about loving one another, in Romans, he talked about with brotherly love, honor, preferring one another. We have a heavenly father. We're the children of God. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. When you read the Bible, he talks about the household of faith. We're family. If you study the Bible, he goes through over and over again how we're born again into the family. We have this heavenly father. Every description of what he talks about is we share life together. We love each other. We help each other. We encourage each other. We push each other. We provoke each other. That's why he said in Hebrews, don't forsake the coming together. Don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. He, he made it very clear that there is a reason that people are to be in touch with people. Because let me put it like this, we need each other. Because let me tell you, in this day and age, especially, you, you sit there and say, well, I've seen churches fall apart. Man, Satan is on the, uh, on the work. But let me tell you, as long as we make the word of God the rock of our church, we're on the solid rock. When storms come, I promise you, we're going to be okay because the rock is greater than anything that we'll face in this world. When we join the church here at Fellowship Baptist Church, and we've done this three weeks in a row, people coming forward to join the church, we're not joining a club. You're being part of a family. Amen. Committed part of a family that is committed to helping each other. But see, here's the thing. We can't stop there. And I think if we just took our thing and just says, we're a family. And it's, it's, it's the come in here and us four and no more. And I'm going to love you and you're going to love me. And, but this, see, the thing is that God not only brought the disciples together to love each other, but he put them on a journey and a mission to do something with that love. See, we are a family that exists to make disciples. Never lose sight of the mission. Jesus gave his entire three years of ministry devoted to the explanation and the demonstration of making disciples. We exist to make disciples. We strive to make each other stronger. The very verse that we use about don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. In the middle of that verse, it says provoking one another to love and good works. There is an aspect of church that God has given us in order to be able to be stronger in this world. You need somebody pushing you to be better. Say, man, I thought God did that. God does do that through each other. It, it's amazing how the disciples, when they were gathering together, they were constantly provoking, prodding, teaching, edifying, praying for one another. But also out of this, we strive to make new disciples. It is always the mission of the church to strive to make new disciples. Praise God when somebody sits in your seat. Sit there and say, that's my seat. Praise God somebody new came in to sit in your seat. You should be glorifying God. Your name is not on that seat. It's not, we, we don't, we're, we're not here for seats. We're not here for our possessions of these things. We're here for the glory of God. Jesus was out. If you notice, every time he went, uh, thousands, hundreds, or one would gather. It didn't matter. It was a matter of he was constantly learning and growing people, building them up. But how does this happen? You see, every, it'd be great if I came in here and every single Sunday I got up. And people, man, we would, we would love this. Five people today gave their life to Jesus Christ. The whole place would go wild. I said, man, praise God. Well, let me tell you. That doesn't just happen. Wouldn't it be great if it just happens, if there was some sort of process or whatever? It doesn't just happen. It doesn't happen because we have a sign and people come in, you know, you know, potential 0294 is here. and they No, these are people of our community. Jesus taught them to go out and find people and reach them and see them baptized and teach them the word of God and help them to grow and carry their burdens and be a real friend and teach them purpose in life. You see, it's not just about us. It's about bringing more in to teach them what it means to be a disciple. But how you do this? See, Jesus had a plan. 
And see, Fellowship Baptist Church is a family that exists to make disciples that love God, love others, and serve both. It's, man, you, you guys say that a lot. Man, I see that a lot. See, it's part of our 2020 plan. It's part of our 2021 plan. It's part of our 19, 2019 plan. It's, it's, it, it's what we do to make disciples. See, a disciple is simply a believer that loves God, loves others, and serves both. You say, that's pretty simple. When Jesus just, you got Matthew 16, turn like four chapters, five chapters forward. Go, go to chapter 22. Verse 36, look at what he says just a few chapters later. He says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first first and great commandment. So what is the priority of every Christian when we lead them to Christ? What is the priority of your life? What is number one before anything else comes into your life? What is the number one thing you do above the Super Bowl, above sports, above your job, above your marriage? Is your relationship with God. That is what we preach. That is what we teach. That is every time somebody walks through the door. That is the goal of your Sunday school class, small group, evangelism, outreaches. That's why we go beyond the walls of prisons. That's why we preach the gospel on Sunday morning. That is why we're here to lead you to love God. Let me explain it like this. Loving God means that you know him and you have a relationship with God. That is what loving God is all about. To have a relationship with God. But then see, he took it to the next level and he says, what is the second? The second is like, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He said, the first one is the great commandment. The second one is like unto it. It's important too that you love one another. He was in the first one as the example. That is literally meaning that God set his priorities in life. You're to love God more than anything. And secondly, you're to have a relationship with one another. You realize that the love that the Bible is talking about is not just a handshake like a Walmart greeter? This isn't just a matter of it's good to see you or let's stand and shake hands and you go, how are you, how are you, how are you? What God established within the local church was deep in relationships that they literally, some of them went to death preaching the gospel shoulder to shoulder over because they had a bond with the love of God. But the love of God and loving others brings us to serving both. In Galatians, the gospel tells us, or the, the Bible tells us, but to lo- by love and serve one another. When, when God was talking about the church coming together, he said, let us consider one another to provoke unto love. And after love, do you know what he says after love? He says to love and good works. Because you realize how detrimental it is to our culture, our society, Columbus, Canal, Winchester, Groveport, wherever you want to point to, that if our church only loves God and loves others and we do nothing with that love, the whole thing that God inspired us to do was to have a love and a passion for one another so that love would come out of us into others. You say, what does that mean? Follow the example of Jesus Christ. Look at what he did. He was constantly loving God, his Father, loving the disciples, and then reaching the world at the same time. See, our our plan is to lead people to love God, to love others, and to serve both. So it means that as you have that calendar, you guys pull that calendar out. And and I want you kind of making notes as we go through this. And, and, And if you need to, in our family meeting tonight, ask questions. Let's talk about this. But you see and realize that if we're going to have a calendar and our goal is to make disciples and provoke one another to love God, love others, and serve both, everything that we do needs to point to that purpose. If not, you know what we are? We're just a very busy church. We're people that are running around constantly and doing tons of things. And it's like, well, man, I'm so excited about doing this, but we're just tired and exhausted because we're not doing anything to be intentional. Jesus was very intentional with what he did. He even said, the Son of Man came not to minister unto, but to minister. He said, this is what I did not come for, and this is what I came to do. He was intentional. Literally meaning everything that he did had a purpose for what he did. The word intentional has the same meaning, means to be, uh, means done on purpose. I, I want to take a calendar and I say, why are you doing this? 
Because there's some things that we've broken the heart of our people in the past, like when we said we're not doing the carnival anymore. And I said, what's coming out of the carnival? Are we making disciples? Because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we were preaching the gospel to kids. And on Sunday, we had people not coming because they were worn out because we had this huge fun day. So we took it out. You say, why was it? I want to be intentional. I want the things that we do to produce disciples. I want to edify the body of Christ. I want to build us up. The, 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 the word uh, intentional literally means purposeful. It's planned out. It's studied. I want to do that with all the things that we do. So we have a plan to deepen our relationship with God this year. One of the core values of our church is we boldly hold the Bible above culture, traditions, and opinions. I want you guys to know something for us as a church We will not back down on preaching the gospel and the truth. We will not. Not at all. And I know that there's laws being discussed and and, and people talking about different things. We will not back down. We're not going to. And I say that as a pastor, but I, I pass that vision on to every teacher, life group leader in our church, everyone that holds the word of God and shares it with others. If God brings us to something, to a chapter or verse, and it's controversial in our society, we say it anyways. Because we're not here for the applause of man. We're not here for the acceptance of society. We're here to do what's right. And the reason that the world is in such a mess is because they're turning their back on what is right. And by the way, it's not working for them. They have casualties after casualties out there. And you say, we can either sit there and just say, well, you made your mess, or we can rescue the perishing and care for the dying. That's what we do. It's not about us pointing that we're all right and they're wrong. It's about reaching them with the truth, running to the darkness with the light of the gospel. That's what we do. We, We have a commitment to do this. Next week, I'm starting a sermon series. We're going to preach through the book of Acts. We're calling it Catching Fire. When you study that the the Spirit of God came upon them, there was a fire that broke out in the hearts of those disciples that turned the world upside down. You know what you find inside the disciples that turned the world upside down? You find commitment. You find sacrifice. You find vision and faithfulness. You, you find conviction that they were willing to die for those things. And I ask this, in our culture, we say we want to turn the world upside down. Do we have those things in our lives? We're going to study the word of God and see what it says about these things. I'm asking you guys to commit. I am. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you guys in 2020, just say every time we, we love God in the way that we have the avenue of loving God and making disciples and for you to make, become a stronger disciple is commit to come to the worship services to hear the word of God. I don't say that like, man, you're in for a treat if you come here, Pastor Tony, preach. I'm not saying that at all. It is the word of God that changes lives. Amen. The word of God will change your kids' lives. It was in revival services and meetings like that that I grew up and they changed my life. I never gave my life to Christ during a movie or a ball game. It was under the preaching of the word of God. And I'm not against movies and ball games. But I'm telling you, if we're raising our kids and we're making those things bigger priority then we are the word of God, then I tell you, we're setting ourselves up for failure of our kids. Our kids need more consistency when it comes to church and the word of God than they do anything else in their life. And I'm not putting that above family. Because if you read the word of God, it's going to tell you that family is vital. It's going to tell you that respecting your parents is vital. Those things have to be a priority. All these things that we're doing is important. We have a number of things planned this year to help people grow in their relationship with God, loving God. Our Moms uh, Connect sponsors a once a quarter meeting for all ladies called Meet Me at the Well. You're going to see these things advertised. February 16th at 1 p.m. This is not on your calendar. This is on the, uh, the ladies ministry calendar for the Moms Connect group. February 16th, it is Moms Connect, but they're open this to everybody. Now, this is why I'm telling you this. Char Dunbar, who is the director of the Women's Clinic of Columbus, has an incredible testimony. And every single day, this woman, this woman is standing with other women to help rescue women that are about to kill their babies, literally turn them over to uh, the, the, the murder of abortion. And she's rescuing. She's going to come in and pour into our ladies on this day. I can't wait. March 14th at 5 p.m., Malcolm Carter is going to come in and preach to all the men of our church. Five o'clock on that Saturday. We did this last year. It was awesome for the guys to have dinner together. We worshiped together. And the man, he just delivered an outstanding message to us. 
So why are you saying this? We have things scheduled in our year to literally corporately as a church and individually to zone in on the problems and the issues that we face within our lives. Say why? It's intentional to help us have a relationship with God. 2020, we have a plan to deepen our love and relationship with others. The second is like unto thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Let me explain this. We have to be intentional to be in each other's lives. Iron sharpens iron. Do you know how that happens? Because iron comes in contact with the other iron. You say, I don't need friends, not according to the Bible. I don't need people speaking in my life, not according to the Bible. You see, God established lasting relationships as he was bringing the disciples together to care for another, to, to help each other. You know it's difficult to care for people that you don't know. Do you guys know that? It's difficult to care for people that you don't know. It's difficult to carry the burdens for people that you don't know. That's why the Bible says that the members should have the same care one for another. The Bible says, let us consider one another. These verses that he talked about is a matter of us having care one for another. We've got to be intentional. The Bible says, bear each other's burdens. You know how you bear each other's burdens? You come alongside of somebody and spend time with them to know what they're dealing with so that you can help them through this. You say, why is this important? Because Jesus laid the foundation. As he gathered the disciples, he pulled 12 men together to go through life together. Ministry, problems, family, death, they dealt with together. Our plan is to have every member of our church connected to other members of the church. One of the ways that we do this, and we say this all the time, is through life groups. Life groups is a term that we made up, but the principle behind it is discipleship. It's a way for us to love each other the way that God has commanded is the second commandment, to love one another, to accomplish the plan of this. These happen all during the week, and I know you guys hear us say this like a broken record about the uh, church planning center. Man, right now, we are filling that thing up, and you click on groups, you're going to find all sorts of ways to make friends and to be involved in each other's lives. An example that I like to give, you're in a circle in life group, and Jesus was with the disciples, And one of them called out the question, which you cannot do in a worship setting like this. One of them called out the question and says, Lord, how do we pray? And Jesus said, pray like this. And they bowed their head and Jesus led them to teach them how to pray. There's so much that we can talk and preach in here and then there's so much that we can't. And there's Christians that sit there and say, I'm struggling with my marriage. I don't know how to deal with my kids. I don't know how to love my husband that doesn't love me back. I don't know what it means to be a Christian and have conviction. I don't know what it means to say that something's wrong and something's right. It doesn't make sense to me. Then to come alongside of Christians shoulder to shoulder and talk about these things. February 2nd, our groups kick off again. Man, gather to grow and make friends. We've established growth groups in our church for the same reason. Sunday mornings in our church for families with Greg Taylor and parents with Pastor Dave and deep Bible study with John Sullivan that just was up here. Just for Ladies with Nancy Rogers and Mike Myers and Fred Kirk and Derek Bujak and all these men study the Word of God every Sunday morning. We have growth groups. The reason why we like calling it growth groups is it's not just a class. It's a group to come and meet people. Guys, don't just come here. Come and meet people. Be engaged in people's lives. It's the same goal as life groups, but just a different platform, a different atmosphere, In our church, we've also, in the same way of being able to love on people, we have connect groups. Open to everyone with purpose to connect with people. There are four groups that we have in our church that we're offering. And if you say, this is new to me, great. I'm glad I get to introduce you to this. We have our Moms Connect. This is for all moms. Sometimes we have it where people have come up to us and say, well, my kids are out of the house. Praise the Lord. We need you in this group. Because you're the one with all the experience because you've been there, done that. Come and mentor, help, pray, gather together with these ladies. Get an example of this. They have a calendar of things that they do every single month. Uh, they have their, one of the next one coming up on March 6th at 7 p.m. They're having coffee and canvas. Now let me explain. As we gather together to paint a canvas and drink coffee with other people, the goal is for you to go out and find somebody that is not in church to help make a disciple. Say, hey, come with me. I'm going to the church. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to paint. We're going to have fellowship. We're going to just hang out, leave the kids behind, and be able to get out of the house. And all of a sudden, they're around Christians to experience them in a way that they don't normally get, either in a church service, either in a normal social setting. Mom's nights, day camps for the kids, mom prom, all these things that they're doing of getting together and serving, helping, and growing as Christians. 
Our Men's Connect is the same purpose, but it is only for the men. Our Man Up event that I was just talking about is one of those reasons. We have in our church prime timers. It's 55 and older. We didn't set an age necessarily on it, but it's a matter of connecting the singers of our church to be able to get together and hang out. If you don't consider yourself a singer, don't put that label on you. That's okay. It's not about the name. It's about connecting. On February 8th, we're going to have a movie night in Potluck here at the church. In March, we're going to the Anthony Thomas tour. In May, we're going to Sight and Sound Theater in Pennsylvania. It's a matter of being able to connect and build relationships with other people. And this is one of the newest ones that we have in our church. It's the Boom Connect. This is for the baby boomer generation, but we're not calling it the baby boomer generation. If you are not a young couple, but you don't consider yourself to be a senior, and you're in the middle of those groups, this group is for you. So I'm not labeling anybody, okay? So don't don't get mad at me. Uh, Part of the thing that they're doing is sponsoring the Grandparent Matter Seminar on February 29th to help equip, train, and encourage grandparents to be the best grandparents they can, especially in the day and culture that we live in today. You can sign up in the lobby. It's going to be an outstanding day, professional speakers. And then they're also, this same group is planning on getting together on a regular basis to help and encourage each other. Then we have corporate things like the church picnic in September that we're doing, a sight and sound theater trip that we're going, just sign up to be on the bus and go from August 21st to 22nd. Uh, we're, we're doing that with Destination Travels. And then December 20th, just gathering together as Christians, we're having our Ball Brother concert in the evening. Not in the morning. The reason why we're doing that is because we want to have a specific uh, Christmas service in the morning. And then we're going to target more of the community in the evening. We talked to the Ball Brothers. They said they have a better result when they do it in the evening. So put that on your calendar. Plan ahead. So I ask you this. When it comes to loving others, are you connected to other Christians? Do you have meaningful relationships in our church? Are you helping Christians? Some of you have been saved a long time. Maybe it's you that needs to step up to lead a group, to disciple people, to teach a class. What are you doing with the heritage, the knowledge? You say, man, I've been in church my whole life. Praise God for that. What are you doing with that? It's not just a matter of bragging on what you have. It's making disciples with what God has given you. Who is in your life that will help you get through when you need help? Loving God, loving others, and serving both. We have a plan to serve God and serve each other. Jesus said, if I then, your Lord and your master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done unto you. You realize that God has established a plan that is for Christians. Our job is to serve one another. Now, I know you're sitting there reading that verse saying, praise God, it's not that. <laughs> it's, like, it's not a matter of washing feet. It's a matter of serving one another. Every ministry of our church is in need of somebody else to come in and help. Every ministry of our church, from nursery ministry to our creative team upstairs, when it comes to our bus ministry, outreaches, and all these things that we have in our church, every person of our church, every member of our church should be actively engaged in doing something. Do you know why? Because you were created as the body of Christ to serve God. It's what we do. The Bible says, shall the hand say to the foot, I have no need of thee. Every part of the body has purpose. And I ask you guys, every one of us as a church, if we're talking about loving God, thank God you're here. Loving others, are you connected to people? And serving both, what are you doing to serve people in our church? And if you're not, I promise you, you come see us. We'll help you engage. During this year, we have plans, both sides of those corners of the sanctuary in the back. We have a plan to be able to put out stations there. On your way out every Sunday, if you have it on your heart to be able to connect, to sign up, to be part of a ministry, there's going to be a station. If you have a heart to be able to connect with other people and you're saying, I don't know how to connect or make friends in the church, on the other side, there's going to be a station to help it make it easy for us to connect people to these ministries. But here's where it gets deep. It's a matter of taking everything that we've talked about and applying it to our community. The Bible says, and Jesus is talking to the disciples, we're using Jesus as our example, say ye therefore, there's four months and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look unto the fields, for they are white already to harvest. He said, lift up your eyes. He said, guys, l- lift up your eyes and look. 
Can you imagine that day when Jesus, they're, they're all gathered together, they just got done having their potluck and their, their activity and they're eating together and they're walking along and Jesus is looking across people. It wasn't, it wasn't, just, it wasn't just the culture. It wasn't just the sin. He saw people. And he stopped with the disciples and he said, hey guys, what are you doing? And imagine in our culture, we'd be on our cell phones or we'd be talking, we'd be on social media, we'd be going to church, we'd be talking about our movie and our potluck and our gatherings and man, that's great. You're together. Praise God. You're helping each other. Praise God. And then he says, look up. He said, I I, I need you to see what I see. I need you to look around. I, I need you to see that these people around you are hurting. These people around you need Jesus. These people around you need what you've got. And the only way they're going to get it is you've got to go into the harvest because the harvest will never come running to you. Amen. So what do we do? We have, I was driving down a refugee last week. I haven't been down refugee in that area for a long time. And I'm looking left and right of me as I'm going down and all these apartment complexes and houses are being built. And I'm thinking, what are we doing being five minutes away to reach those people? If our community is growing, our church should be growing. Do you guys hear me? If our community is growing, our church should be growing. You know why? Because we're here as a hospital. We're here as a place of refuge and help. We're not here to be a has-been church because we've, man, thank God what he's done. But we're, we're here to go forward with the glory of God. I'm going to tell you right now, here's, I'm going to list 17 things that we have to go into 2020 to reach people. You guys ready for this? 17 things. Number one, I'm going to put this at the top. Is God has blessed us with a bus ministry. But I'll tell you, we're in great need of having people step up to be workers and drivers in our church. A lot of those people that I just mentioned that are five minutes from the church cannot walk five minutes in the cold or in the snow to get here. The only way they're going to get here is if somebody goes gets them. In our culture today, it's, we have everybody, a lot of people that have cars, and they're able to do it. But we have a lot of people that will not come to church, and the only way their kids will come to church is if somebody goes gets them. Amen. God has blessed us with that. Uh, God has blessed us with our Young at Heart ministry. The third Thursday of every month, God has allowed us to preach and teach seniors of our community. Do you guys know something that is cool? We used to average between 80 and 100. This past year, we averaged 150 on that ministry here at the church. 150. Praise God for that. 2020, Easter, we're having our unstoppable love. Uh, I did a, a message series a while back called Driven by Love and preached this message of God's unstoppable love, and that message just stuck in my head, and I'm thinking, Easter, God's unstoppable love. It doesn't matter where you've been. Man, God has blessed uh, us with this platform to be able to give this message of God's unstoppable love. So here's the things that we're doing differently this year. That's it. Last year, we took a step of faith. It was crazy. We didn't know what to expect. We said, let's add Good Friday because we had people from the community saying, do you have a Good Friday service? We had over 1,200 people come Good Friday and over 30 people accept Jesus Christ as their Savior on that Friday. Praise God for that. It was awesome. You know, we'll give God the glory for that. Praise God. <laughs> Sunday came, 9 a.m., Less than 400 people came. And I'm not belittling that. Praise God, we had 400. But it, it, it was like, I, it, it, was, it was way down from the, the 1,200 that we had. And then the next service, we had uh, over 1,200 again. For over, uh, we had over 2,800 people that came and over 60 people gave their life to Christ. Oh, so cool that, that, that we had last year. Praise God for that. Today is our kickoff meeting. Today at 1230, as soon as the service is over. So what do we do? Because people started saying the early service is hard because we do it twice in a row. It's difficult because of the fact is that a lot of people that we're trying to reach are not going to get up super early in the morning to come to church. So we, if we take and just do away with that third service and we don't have that 9 o'clock, if we had that 400 show up for one of the other two services, we max out. We can't handle that many people. So what do we do? This year we're going to break it up. We're going to have Good Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday morning. And what it does is it targets those people that if, if Good Friday worked, you say, how, is, how do you know Saturday is going to work? I don't know, okay? I don't know. But the only way we're going to know is if we try it. And we didn't know last year when we did Good Friday and we had 1,200. So praise God, let's try it again and see what God does. Last year was one of the best years we've ever had with one of the highest turnouts. It was amazing what God did. I just want to see God do it again. That week, because of the busyness of the week, we will not have the midweek service. 
It's, it's not a matter of me trying to do with things, but I do away with things. It's just a matter of I want to make sure that we're able to pour our hearts into that weekend. A lot of cleaning and prep. The Sunday night before will be our dress rehearsal. Here's what's cool. When we're done with the Easter drama, we're going to have them be seated. And we're going to start the drama again. Okay, we've never done this before. We're going to start the drama again. Literally do the invitation, set them down, and we go into another act and another scene that's going to be crazy intense. It's only going to last for like five minutes, and then it's going to cut off, and the screen's going to roll right into to be continued. The reason we want to do this, because we want to prove a point that when Jesus came out of the grave, he was not finished. He was finished with our sin. He was not finished with us. The next week, we're going to continue the story of Jesus Christ, of what he commissioned the disciples to do to give them purpose in life. We want to preach a message that next week through the drama and that, that God has rose from the dead and given you life for a reason. You have purpose. God has a plan for your life. We're going to talk about the story of God, what he did with the disciples, and then have that third week is not going to be a drama like we've done in the past. The third week, we want to just have a celebration service and baptism and have people come. And so this is way different. I know it's way different, which I know people are going to be like, Pastor Tony, does that mean we're not having uh, the, the heaven scene? We are not having the heaven scene. We are not doing those other things that we've done in the past. We want to focus on this. You say, why? Because this is what God has laid on our hearts to do. I'm excited. To, but I'm telling you guys this. We need you. We need cleaning teams and promotion teams. We need people to join the choir. Next Sunday afternoon, we're moving up the stage. Uh, we're, we're making a professional commercial for this. We need you guys to help spread the word. Uh, share the video when it comes out, those things that we're trying to do. And then help us. Next Sunday afternoon at 1.30, we're bringing up the stage. On May 3rd, which is four weeks after Easter, we're having a friend day. You say, why are you doing that? We want to emphasize the importance of relationships. If you invited them for Easter and they say, wow, that was cool. Tell me the next time you have have something going on in your church. Great, we have a friend day. Bring them back. When we dismiss church on that day, we're going to have inflatables and we're going to have food trucks and stuff like that. The whole reason is to keep people here to get to know them. After that, we have uh, our community movie night on May 22nd. We did this last year. We had like over 300 people that came out, sat them down, showed them a movie, and gave them the gospel before we started. VBS is June 22nd through the 25th. Our theme this year is the Jungle Curse. Pastor Dave is doing like a tropical theme, a lot of fun, plan on being there. We follow up that Sunday uh, at 11 with our VBS Sunday. Guys, this is so different. I know some of you probably came in and go, what is going on? Last year, I started the service off by coming out of a UFO. That's how I came out. And it was fun. It was different. And God blessed in a great way. And we have a number of the VBS families that come back to it. Uh, Another thing, July 25th, that's not on your calendar, but I want to put this on your hearts and minds. We are doing or being taken part of a community event called the Hero Hundreds. Uh, it's sponsored by My DMD Hero and the Brock Strong Foundation. My DMD Hero is the organization that Chris Andrews and his family has started for those struggling with muscular dystrophy, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. That's what DMD Hero stands for. They were going to gather at Canal Winchester High School wearing shirts with a whole bunch of families that are dealing with this disease. A lot of struggling, hurting, question asking families of our community. We're going to run with them, talk with them, fellowship with them with the intention of pointing to our next Sunday, which is going to be Hero Sunday at Fellowship Baptist Church on August 2nd at 11 a.m. We have guest speaker with us, Batman, that's going to be with us on that day. This is a Christian guy that travels around with a professional Batman suit and car, and he's going to have it out here, and it's just a, a, a thing to draw in these families but we're going to fill this church up with those that are struggling with these diseases. And it's really just uh, anybody, families that are struggling with illness. People that struggle with illness have a lot of questions about God. Where is God? Does God love me? Why would God do this? And we're going to take that whole day to love on them and help them. But let me tell you guys, we cannot have that Sunday without pushing forward with our up project to have lifts in our church to get these kids in the church. This is a growing problem in our culture. It's a growing issue among so many people. Children's Hospital has tripled in size since I've been here. So many hurting families. The question is, people are hurting. How are we going to help? We've got to be ready for this. We follow up by a fall movie night. 
um, that we're having on September 4th to do the same thing again. We are having a Celebrate Freedom Night uh, sponsored by the Primetimers on 9-11. It's going to be a night that we're going to honor on 9-11, honor our military and our first responders of our community. And then we're also going to use that as an opportunity just to reach out to people as a whole. We have the hoppers and some other things going on that day. It's going to be a big concert, a big blowout that we're going to do here at the church. And other opportunities, and I would just want to lay these out, that God's given us opportunities to be part of. Glory Rain Stables, that God has blessed us with Bob and Shelly. You get behind them. The Women's Clinic of Columbus. We talk about that ministry. I got a tour with Jenny just a couple weeks ago. She said, we need help. We need help. We talk about people turning to abortion, but what are we going to do to help them? Behind the Walls Prison Ministry. We advertise that all the time, allowing Christians to go behind the walls to witness the people that are messed up and, 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 and stuck in problems. Broad Street Mission, recovery group programs, all these different things that we have. And the last thing, we have a number of our families that are going off to war this coming year. They're being deployed. And we have families in our church that are going to need help. They're opening opportunities for us to reach into their families and help as well. The other ones that are part of their group that will be shipped out. So many things that we can do. You say, I can't do all that. The question is, what will you do? You say, I can't do everything, but I tell you, you can't do everything, but you should do something. And every one of us, in our ability to do that, is just going through this year with a vision to help people. Uh, I'll mention these things, and I'll be done. I went way over my time, and I'm sure the guys are looking at it like you're crazy. Um, we have our missions that we're doing in October. We have missions all the way through. We're asking everybody to participate in missions. But with that, in the middle of that, in, we have the BEMA conference here at the church. It's the national conference for the mission board we will have and be hosting missionaries from all over the world literally all over the world and i'm telling you guys we cannot pull this conference off without help these missionaries come off the field looking for encouragement and help we love on them and help them and through that time we have dr shoemaker and a lot of other people that are coming in and then we have my mission trip that i'll be going to africa and in august uh, last year I went, I got to spend six days preaching in a conference. I'm doing that. It's not the type of trip that I can bring people with just because it's a conference type thing. But we are doing a mission trip to the Philippines this coming summer. We have an opportunity at the end of July, the beginning of August to go. This is being sponsored by the Emerge Group. If you have questions about it, you say, I am interested in doing a mission trip. Next Sunday, we'll pull you into room, room 102, immediately after the service. And we're going to talk about these things of how you can be involved. Helping in here, helping out there, and the Great Commission tells us to go around the world. That's what we do. Now, I'm going to close with this. I was reading my Bible, and I came across a passage where they were saying that Jesus had no respect amongst his own people. He was in, he was, he was in Nazareth, and they said that nobody believed in him. And he says this passage after this, and he says, And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Can you guys imagine this? Can you imagine God saying, I want to do great and mighty things, and God passing by and saying, they don't even want it. He said he did not, read it, he did not many wonderful things because they did not believe. What's it going to take for all the things that we've talked about for God to literally just come in and take over? To breathe life into families and bring life into broken relationships. To step into the drug problem of Columbus and step into the, the suicide rate and all these things that we talk about are going around us. He said, what's it going to take? There's only one thing, and that is Christians crying out to a God that will make a difference. It's not about our heritage. It's not about our buildings. It's not about, it's about the Spirit of God working through what we're doing. 